In part four of our interview with Dr. Hadler, he discusses the field of epidemiology and why the mainstream press keeps getting fooled by the scare of the week. What is the field of epidemiology? Epidemiology um, is difficult to define in one sentence. It has its roots in the study of epidemics. It moved on to adopting the scientific medicine to testing whether or not clinical associations happen by chance alone. That exercise was very productive, uh, otherwise we would not understand that cigarette smoking had its hazards. But we have now taken on small effects, and small effects are much harder to probe for association. Small effects me are meaning either a tiny thing that happens to many people or something that happens quite in impressively to very few. And the reason that's so hard to take on is there's enormous individual differences. Fortunately, we are not all the same. This is not 10,000 inbred mice. This is thousands and thousands of outbred human beings. And there's an enormous amount of individual variability so that it's very hard and very challenging for epidemiology to look for associations, either health outcomes associations with health interventions or associations that might occur spontaneously, say with risk factors, that are very small. So the, the reason we see so much conflicting data and the reason the scare of this week is not the scare of next week is because almost always it's looking for a very small effect in a very large population. There are other issues that relate to presuppositions and vested interest. For example, almost all pharmaceutical trials for agents that, are, when the trial is performed by industry, are li more likely to be a positive result than when the trial is supported by some sort of governmental uh, funding mechanism. How did it become such a prominent field? Uh, well, there have been a number of very important epidemiologic studies that relate to observations in the community. Uh, they're always challenging, but they're important to do. For example, that's how we understand the hazards of cigarette uh, tobacco abuse is through observational epidemiologic studies. The likelihood of having lung cancer is much higher if you've had exposure to tobacco than if you've not had exposure to tobacco. Uh, when we look at the smaller effects, we get in trouble, which is why this year, if you give your children margarine, you're doing something terrible, and last year, if you gave them butter, you were doing something terrible, and the answer to that paradox is that we can't measure the effect of a nutrient in people who are eating all kinds of things and in people who are very different. So between the the observational data that got us to understand the hazards of tobacco abuse and the observational data that creates the scare of the week is the role for modern epidemiology. What is the concept of co-founders? Well, a confounder is, is very simply the important unmeasured variable when you're looking at asso clinical associations, associations between exposures and health effects. For example, um, uh, you can easily show we're less likely to have an automobile accident when we go over 65 miles an hour or under 20 miles an hour. And if you didn't ask about confounders, you would discover that people might advocate going over 65 miles an hour or under 20 miles an hour. But if you ask where do we spend most of our time when we're in a moving vehicle, you'll discover that the overwhelming amount of time is between those extremes. And in fact, you're much, given the, the, the phenomenon of how much time are you over 65 miles an hour, it is far more hazardous than being less than 65 miles an hour. If you hadn't thought to measure the amount of time one spends driving at different speeds, you would have missed that confounder. 